Prop A. Okay, so this one is another bond measure, right? This is just for the city. Uh, so under state law, San Francisco must build or approve 82,000 new housing units, 46,500 affordable. So basically, if San Francisco doesn't do that, then um, they lose their tools with how they like allow what can be built. Um, and there's just going to be a lot more. We lose our local control of what can get built. So it's up to the city to somehow approve that. Uh, that's what they're trying to do. Okay, so what this will do is let the city, um, before we get that some background, right? So there's been a few of these bonds before, right? 2019, we borrowed 600 million. 2016, we uh, repurposed 260.7 million. 2015, we borrowed we borrowed 300 million, right? This is all for affordable housing, just to build more housing in San Francisco because things are very expensive. Um, this is what our progress has been. 2021, we uh, planning department has authorized 2,000 units. We've completed 4,600 in that year, 2022, so on and so forth. So we're building right four digits, you know, low low four digits every every year. And 2031, do the math, we're probably not going to reach that number. Um, but anyways, uh, so these affordable uh, housing buildings, developments, right? By definition, they're affordable, so their rents are going to be lower. Um, it means that uh, uh, we're going to read through this. Okay, so when you're building affordable versus market rate, the difference in costs um, is not that. Great because the, the land still costs the same, the materials are cost very similar, right? Things could look pretty luxury, but you know they're they're, they're not that different. Um, you could have a, a little more costs, right? Affordable projects, uh, oftentimes they have a lot of stipulations. Um, they have to be built with uh, skilled union labor, and that's expensive. So in, in actuality, affordable housing might be a little more expensive than luxury housing. So what does this all mean, right? So to make the numbers work, if you're trying to build something up. Um, you got some issues, right? Your your revenue is gonna be lower, right? The rents coming in in the future and in your other in your whole portfolio, your rents are lower, and you still have to pay almost the same amount to get things built. Uh, and what what that means is you have to get piece by piece financing. You have to secure funding from the local government, the state government, the federal government, uh, philanthropy, whatever, just to get these projects built to serve uh, affordable uh, incomes that are quite low. Okay. And what happens is you can't, if one piece falls apart, right? So I got 25% of my funding from the feds, 20% from the state, right? Whatever. Um, if one of the people say no, then, then I'm down 20% of my funding. And then this project is on pause. Idea uh, with this is we replenish the pot of money that the city has to give to these projects. And hopefully we can get more affordable units built. That's not complete. <laughs> has to okay, some of the numbers here so we are asking the city is asking for 300 million dollars in general obligation bonds uh, general obligation means that uh, you just have to pay it back revenue means the, the project that you're borrowing for generates revenue and that's how it would pay, pay the, the borrowing back but this one you just have to pay back okay um, it is some of the most of the money is to build to acquire to rehab new rental housing and then the other one is for um, low to moderate incomes uh, no, uh, ignore this. Um, just some background. The city does have a, a limit that they can borrow, which is a uh, ten billion. Um, uh, we are currently at one point two percent out of our three percent legal limit to borrow, right? And what this means about uh, the legal limit is just the idea is that we're not borrowing too much, so the city doesn't go into financial risk. Okay. And again, this is over time. It's like when you take out a mortgage or whatever, it costs more than your principal. So the total cost to the city is going to be 544 million. The net property tax rate. So, so this number is the, um, the general tax rate right now on our existing bonds. If you uh, have a property, you're paying about 18 cents per hundred dollars of that value um, in taxes, property taxes to pay back the bonds that the city already has. What this bond would do will add an additional about 0 0.057 cents for every hundred dollars of your property value. I should have done the numbers for you on an average, you know, San Francisco house, but that's what it is. And it tells you on your prop on your property tax thing, right? How much you're paying. These are existing bonds that the city already has, right? So it pays for things like like the old the other affordable housing bonds, like ca uh, making parks and like transportation and road improvement. That's what uh that's just the general picture. And this, um, I don't know if we have time to go into this, but I just compared one city versus uh, Vienna. Um, yeah, maybe we don't get too deep into these numbers. Point being that we are not spending nearly as much as, for example, this European city does on affordable housing. 
um, even though it's comparable, maybe. So that is the background. Should we borrow three hundred million dollars to try to build more affordable housing in order to try and reach the number that we have to under state law and what the city has already agreed to? Uh, I guess one thing I should point out is that uh, these previous this pre this one's already uh, almost all gone, right? It's either spent or it's already assigned to a project already, and so on and so forth. So the previous one, twenty nineteen. Yes, the city still hasn't um, identified where 58% of that is going to yet. But again, this is just, it costs money to, to build projects in the city. It's very expensive and that's just the city wants to finance it. Okay, so let's stick with the uh, same groups. Again, same idea, for and against. Um, uh, okay, you guys before this, you guys before, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're, we're gonna do like eight and a half minutes, okay, so. Yeah. All right, take it away, 14. Tell us why we should vote for this. All right, that first point is cut off. But, um, okay, uh, housing, we're in a houses crisis. We gotta address the issue. And people aren't making enough money in order to keep up with the cost of housing. And if we're, we don't fund this, we're gonna lose a lot of diversity in our community. Think about the firefighters and our teachers, nurses, veterans, families and seniors. Um, we gotta provide essential, affordable housing for everyone. Um, what else? We gotta, we gotta meet our state housing goals of 46,000 units in the next eight years. So. It's really essential that we work towards building more housing in the city. There's going to be an annual independent audit if you're worried about where the money's going and how it's being spent. Um, we're tr the city's trying to earn matching funds from state and federal affordable housing programs with the goal of doubling the investment for housing and your property taxes won't increase. This is a bond. Um, it's being supported by Mayor London Breed, the Board of Supervisors President, Aaron Peskin, um, a lot of other organizations. Anything else you guys want to add? All right, going once, going twice. Okay, again, tell us why we should not vote for this. Bond. Yeah, you know, borrowing costs are higher to the inflation. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry? Uh, <laughs> what? Am I wrong? Borrowing costs are higher than they used to be due to inflation. So, you know, borrowing money in 2019, it was easy. Inflation was like, what? Or like, interest rates were lower back in 2019 before the pandemic, before all these disruptions, right? These days, uh, money isn't cheap. I mean, you can see it in the tech industry. That's why there are a ton of layoffs because everybody was like, hey, we get just like free borrowing everywhere all the time. These days, not so much. Uh, so, you know, borrowing money, it's actually more expensive than it used to be. Uh, this will actually increase property taxes for all property owners, right? Uh, and 50% of those uh, increased property taxes are allowed to be passed on to tenants, which means that your rents are gonna go up for everyone. Um, also, another reason is, you know, the city still has money from the previous bond measure. 2019. So it's like, hey, you know, why don't you eat your first serving of food before you come back for seconds? Uh, and also, you know, the market, the market, the free hand of the market, you know, I think it's a good, you know, hand. Yeah, it will incentive, it just incent, like, if we don't have enough housing, then that just incentivizes other municipalities in, like, Daly City, Marin, to build their own housing, and, you know, they, they get some of the people that we can't uh, house, There's some of the people go over there, it's fine. Uh, also, I, I'd like to see some sort of incentives to like get the projects completed. Because right now it's kind of like this money goes goes out the door to these projects, and if the project doesn't get completed or if like a different portion of funding falls through for whatever reason, then the rest of that funding is just kind of in limbo for a weird amount of time. Like what happened? Like, you know, and it's just kind of out there. So I would like to see like okay, this money only goes to those projects if uh, certain conditions are met. This this money field it seems like it's uh, unconditional in that sense. So that's another. Are you against? Mm. That's all I got. Anybody else on the against? Why is this? Yeah.